Turnitin is used by the university to detect plagiarism, but it is also a valuable learning tool for you, if you know how to use it. As a student, you're still learning the rules and conventions of referencing, and it's to be expected that sometimes you may make mistakes. Your originality report can point out some of these errors before you submit your assignment. In order to use Turnitin to your advantage, you need to know how to read and analyse your originality report. Once you have submitted your assignment to Turnitin, you will automatically be sent an originality report. This may take just a few minutes, or longer if the system is busy. The originality report highlights the similarities between your work and other work found on websites and databases. Turnitin will provide you with a similarity index, an overall figure that represents a percentage of text that Turnitin has matched from other sources. It will also highlight selected words or paragraphs that it has found elsewhere and state where this text originated. It is important to remember that there is no good or bad similarity index, no pass or fail rate. Generally, the higher the percentage, the more likely it is that you may have plagiarised, but a 15% match text may have more plagiarism than one rated 50%, as we will see later. Turnitin only indicates match text, that is, where it has previously seen the text. It cannot assess whether or not plagiarism has taken place. That requires a human being. So let's have a look at how to find your originality report, and then later we'll look at some examples of how to interpret an originality report. To access your report, go into your Blackboard site and click on the Turnitin link. Click on the View Complete button, as you did when submitting your assignment. If you've submitted more than one assignment via Turnitin, you may need to scroll down until you see the one you want. Click on Show Details. Under the heading Originality, you will see a percentage figure. This indicates that your work has a 33% match to other sources. To get more information, click on the percentage or the coloured box. This will take you into a detailed originality report. Your assignment is shown on the left side of the screen and the source of the match text on the right. Note that the numbers in your text correlate with the numbered sources on the right side of the screen. Once you have accessed your originality report, you can make any changes and resubmit your work as long as your submission deadline has not passed. So, it's in your interest to know how to interpret your report in order to make improvements to your assignment and before you resubmit it for marking. It's important to remember that if you do review and amend your work, you need to allow at least 24 hours for Turnitin to give you a new originality report. You should note, therefore, when your submission deadline is and allow plenty of time for using Turnitin. The similarity index is based on the overall word count, so a high percentage of a small word count may be insignificant, or a small percentage of a large word count may indicate a case of plagiarism. What is important is that, whatever the figure, you should check your originality report in detail to see what you can change. The first example of an originality report shows quite a high similarity index. 33%, which may on first sight appear to represent plagiarism. However, on closer inspection, you can see that the first and last box to be highlighted show direct quotations. The student has used the correct conventions for acknowledging the sources, but Turnitin is suggesting that it has found each quotation from a different source. This may occasionally happen to you, but if you are confident that you have referenced your source accurately and appropriately, you have nothing to worry about. It is a good idea to keep detailed notes of your reading, so that, if asked by your tutor, you are able to show the sources you have used. Try not to use extensive quotations in your assignment. Your tutor is looking for you to read various sources and then demonstrate that you have understood the literature by paraphrasing or putting it into your own words. The second highlighted box is short, but it is a clear example of poor paraphrasing. The author has simply changed a few words and deleted others. This sentence is plagiarised. This is a clear example of plagiarism. The student has accessed an e-book via the university search engine Quest. 
This is a reputable source to use, however she's not referenced the source in the assignment, nor has she paraphrased effectively. She's only tweaked the original text slightly. Your words need to convey the meaning or concept of the original text, but should be written in a substantially different way. If you find it difficult to rewrite the words from a book or a journal, try reading the text through, putting it to one side, and then considering what is the essence of what the author says and why is it significant. This submission again has a high similarity index, 44%. Turnitin suggests that it has found three internet sources within this assignment. The first highlighted box is part of a short sentence and it's probably fair to say that a tutor would have few concerns about an act of plagiarism here. However, the next two highlighted boxes are of concern and it appears that the student has simply copied and pasted from the internet with a couple of minor changes. Two books are referenced in the text, Nere and Gibson, but Turnitin indicates that it has seen very similar words and phrasing in the indicated websites. On seeing this, a tutor may conclude that the student is simply trying to authenticate the text with a bogus reference. She may then ask to view the student's assignment notes. This example represents an act of plagiarism for two reasons, unacknowledged direct quotations and fake references. As a student, you're expected to use a variety of sources in your assignments, including books and journals, and it's not considered good academic practice to rely extensively on websites for your information. While there are some extremely useful sources on the internet, many sites are not reliable, accurate or credible. This is a blatant example of plagiarism. Although this section of the text is short, Turnitin has found its source is an essay bank, that is, an essay was either downloaded for free or bought and was not written by the student. The reference given is a false one. This example also has quite a high similarity index, 47%, but when we look more closely we can see there's little cause for concern regarding plagiarism. The text that's been picked up by Turnitin is short and relates to the technicalities of the subject, in this case creating a PowerPoint presentation. It would therefore be hard to paraphrase. If you're writing a science-based essay, you may find that sections of it are difficult to rewrite because of the scientific terminology, but be careful that you do not copy large chunks of text. Remember, always acknowledge the words, ideas or images of other people. Your tutor will be looking for you to demonstrate that you have read widely and understood the work of authors. Avoid using too many quotations, and if you do use one or two, ensure you reference accurately. Be sure to paraphrase effectively. Don't just tweak the odd word. You need to find a way to express your ideas, backed up, of course, by the evidence. Submit your assignment to Turnitin early and allow plenty of time to view your originality report. Check what Turnitin is highlighting, but remember you don't need to worry about correctly referenced quotations, your reference list or a few technical or scientific phrases. It's not just how high the percentage is that should concern you, but rather what Turnitin is actually telling you. If your percentage is very low, it may well be that you've not incorporated enough references into your essay. Acknowledging your sources of evidence is simply good academic practice. Ignorance is no defence. It's down to you to know how to reference. You should always use Cite Them Right as a guide to accurate referencing. You can get a copy from the University Library or electronically from Blackboard. If you need further help with referencing, avoiding plagiarism or using Turnitin, you can email or make an appointment at the iZone in the library to see a learning advisor. Or help is available whenever you need it via Blackboard. Just click on the Skills at Cumbria tab.